everyone, I'm Antonia Lafaso. Welcome to my home. I'm so excited to be doing this cook along with you for the Feast of Seven Fishes. We're gonna do an anchovy toast today with a little bit of olive oil, butter, flake sea salt, Italian anchovies, and parsley. This is a great dish for the Feast of Seven Fishes, which is a meal primarily made of a bounty of seafood for Christmas Eve. I grew up in Long Island, New York, and we did dishes like this every single year. Okay, so a couple of housekeeping tips that we need to go over. Let's preheat the oven to a medium high broil. You wanna make sure that you have both of your wire racks in there at the high top level and also at the medium level. We will adjust the toast from the top to the bottom so that it gets nice and brown and evenly browned. Um, and you wanna make sure that you have five tablespoons of unsalted high quality grass fed butter at room temperature. All right. We are ready to start cooking. We'll do a little stretch. We'll do a little like roll out the shoulders. This is a great recipe. I love anchovies and I specifically love anchovies on crispy, buttery, olive oily, toasted bread with a ton of salt and garlic and parsley. Super easy dish, but this is about sort of high quality ingredients. So we've got a beautiful grass fed butter, unsalted. We've got great olive oil. We have a flake sea salt that we're gonna use. And then we have incredible imported Italian anchovies. And if anyone has ever spent any time on the Amalfi Coast or anywhere in Italy, you will know that the anchovies over there are so different than what we have in the States. So please, if you can splurge this time of year, do it with an imported anchovy from Italy. These products are available online. Specialty grocers as well also have these kinds of items. Okay, so let's start with our baguette. Yes, baguettes are French. This is an Italian dish. That's okay, no one's gonna get upset. Um, I like to use a baguette because it's a little more firm and put together. Ciabatta is also another opportunity, but for some reason, I don't always go for the ciabatta because the beautiful thing about ciabatta, it's got a lot of ton of holes and I really want this bread to be a little less aerated. So I'm going to take the bread, I'm gonna cut it in half and then we're gonna cut it in half again and then long ways, okay? So just right down the center. I wanna make sure that my hand is on top. I'm using a serrated knife and I'm coming through around and around to have the bread open perfectly. And you can see what I'm talking about. It's a concentrated bread, right? There are a little bit of aeration holes there that are great, but this is bread that can really hold up to a ton of fat, that olive oil and butter, and it can also hold up um, to kind of toasting and cooking. Think about, essentially we're making a garlic bread with anchovies. Um, so we've got the baguette trimmed and cut in half. We're just gonna place it on top of this sheet rack. We already have the broiler ready to go. It's at a medium to high. And then of course we have both of those baking sheets inside of the oven ready to go at the top tier to get nice and brown and the bottom tier so that it gets perfectly golden brown. I'm gonna take a clove of garlic um, and just kind of, I just need one clove of garlic. So I just kind of pop on the top, right? Hit it very, very gently with sort of the base in the palm of my hand and the cloves just kind of open up. Okay, so I only need one clove of garlic here because we're just gonna use this as an opportunity to rub the bread with garlic. So the original garlic bread is called fatunta. And fatunta is basically just bread that's been toasted and then rubbed with garlic. So we just wanna give it like a little bit of garlic essence, if you will. So when I cut open the garlic, you can see this piece that's open. So the skin has been pierced because we don't want the primary flavor to be garlic. We want the primary flavor to be fat and anchovies, butter and anchovies, olive oil and anchovies. But the garlic is just really to sort of give that underlining tone when you're like, ooh, it tastes like something. There's just a little bit of garlic that's rubbed on here. Um, so we just go ahead, top to bottom, side to side. When you're rubbing your bread with garlic, you don't wanna do it just in the center, right? Because that center bite only has garlic. You wanna go edge, 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 center, center, center. And you wanna do it a couple times. The smell of the garlic is on so great on the bread. But again, this is just to kind of rub the essence of that garlic, the oil of that garlic on this raw bread. And then we're gonna start with the fat. Okay, so get rid of that. We don't need any more of this garlic. We're gonna start with just a little bit of olive oil. And by a little bit of olive oil, I mean a lot. 
We're just gonna generously drizzle olive oil over the top of the bread. Now, why am I using butter and olive oil, okay? Both are flavored, right? So the olive oil is gonna give more flavor to the fat, whereas the butter is just gonna give this rich creaminess, okay? Also, really kind of allows for a richer browning. So butter tends to brown very, very quickly. Olive oil has it take a little bit more time. So it kind of makes the bread cook a little bit better as the butter allows for it to brown. Okay, so the bread has been cut. Olive oil has been drizzled. There's a great amount of garlic that's just been rubbed over the top. Now we're gonna do five tablespoons of butter. We're just going to spread over the top of the bread, okay? Just like so, right over the top. So olive oil and butter. Olive oil, butter, and garlic, right over the top. Again, super simple recipe, but really it's about high quality ingredients made in a super special way. Okay, so butter, butter from base to base, side to side, we don't want one area that is not covered in butter. Great, here we go. Done and done. So we've got all that butter, all that garlic. Ugh, you know this is splurging when you put that much butter and that much garlic just on some toast. Okay, we're gonna remove the top of anchovies and we're gonna generously place anchovies throughout the area. So I like to kind of not mess with the anchovies too much in here. We're gonna pull them out. Let's see, so beautiful. Look how beautifully pink and cured they are in olive oil. We're gonna just lay them out and we're gonna cut them halfway on a bias and then just arrange them perfectly on top of that toast, right? So it's essentially eight pieces per side. We're gonna have a good amount of anchovies here. So, so, so good. It takes so much for me not to just pop one of these like right into my mouth. Okay, so we're gonna start to layer the anchovies. We're gonna lay the anchovies right onto this buttered olive oil bread. So we're just cutting the anchovy on a bias. And by a bias, I just mean I have the entire filet. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice it with my knife on an angle, right? So it's not a blunt end. There's kind of like a, a, a little rectangular shape at the end. And then I just want the anchovy to really be sort of every inch in between the bread. So inch between each layer. Okay, we don't want it stacked with anchovies. Anchovies are very aggressive in flavor. They have high salinity um, and they just have that beautiful oily type of fish flavor that we love, but can be very, very aggressive. So I always say a little bit of anchovy goes a long way. So don't feel like you have to really overcrowd the bread with anchovies. Now, if you are an anchovy fanatic and your entire family is an anchovy fanatic, please feel free to put as much anchovy on here as you'd like. But I'm gonna go with an inch in between all. And we just wanna kinda layer them. I mean, it looks so simple and so easy. And this is also something that you can do ahead of time, right? So we're looking for the Feast of Seven Fishes, which is Christmas Eve, a lot of cooking to be done, right? A lot of, lot of prep to be done. So a day in advance, a lot of stuff can be done. You can cut your anchovies ahead of time. You can cut your bread ahead of time, but then rewrap it so that it doesn't go uh, bad or get stale. And so you can have all this ready to go, but then I would maybe make them the morning of, and you can leave them like this, olive oil, buttered, and then just kind of left on a sheet tray wrapped. And right before you're getting ready to serve, pull it out and put it into the broiler and toast. It's also one of those dishes that after the bread is toasted and beautifully crusted, you know, and even with the parsley on it, it's a dish that can sit for a long period of time on a table. If you have a ton of people over, there's like a buffet lined up. This anchovy toast is not gonna die. It's gonna live on the table for a long time. Let me wash my hands.
So essentially, you can make this early morning of Christmas Eve, wrap it and hold it and get it ready just to pop into the broiler right before you guys are gonna get ready to eat or serve. Look how beautiful that looks. It's all the olive oil, the butter, the garlic, and all those anchovies lined up like perfect little anchovy soldiers. I'm gonna pop it into the oven. I'm gonna put it medium high, right? We've got it medium high, and we're just gonna let these toast. And I always like to say the broiler is a dangerous, dangerous tool in the kitchen. Not because it's unsafe, but because we always tend to forget what's in the broiler. It happens all the time. How many bagels have you burned? How many pieces of toast have you burned? Garlic bread, oh my goodness, all day. So I always feel like there should be a timer on. Even if you know that you're going to, you know, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna forget, I'm not gonna forget, don't worry, I'm not gonna forget. Everyone always forgets. Your kids come in, your husband's talking to you, someone's talking to you, you get a phone call before you know it, you completely forget that you've got something in the broiler. So when I'm teaching someone how to cook, I like to talk about equipment and ingredients in theory, right? So everyone should really pay attention to how their ovens behave, right? Some broilers are so, so, so strong. Others, maybe if it's an older oven, you know, are like the little engine that could. So you may need to really put the, you know, if it's a broiler that's having a little bit of a hard time really holding its heat, maybe the toast is right up there at the top. If you have a broiler that's hyper aggressive and it is just like on fire, maybe it needs to come down a little bit. So know your equipment and be able to adjust based on what your equipment needs are and what you, equipment you have versus exactly what the recipe says, if that makes sense. So this is such an easy recipe. We're done. It's in the oven, it's toasting. We're gonna finish it with a little bit of a flake sea salt and some chopped parsley. Um, and then it is ready to go, it is ready to serve. Okay, let's talk about parsley. Flat parsley, flat Italian parsley. I like to say Italian parsley. I would not use a curly parsley. Curly pars parsley actually tastes a little bit different than a flat leaf parsley. Uh, flat leaf parsley or Italian parsley is the parsley of choice in most Italian cooking. So I like, we're just gonna pull a little bit out of here and then we're gonna just cut some of that parsley off, just like that. I like to kind of use a little bit of stem. I'm fine with stem, especially if it's up higher. It's completely acceptable without question. The stem at the bottom is a little bit more sort of grassy, a little bit more sort of soil kind of flavor. So I like to stay away from the base of that parsley. That being said, I'm 100% gonna keep the parsley. Woo! Look at that right out of the oven. Oh, so perfect. The edges are perfectly toasted. The butter is actually bubbly in there. The anchovy is just kissed with a little bit of heat and that brings out that beautiful um, oily fish kind of a flavor and that natural salinity. We're gonna top it with some Italian parsley and this is good to go. So Italian flat leaf parsley is here. The stems we're not using. We will use the stems in something else, like a base of a soup. We can also use the stems in stock. We can also use the stems in any kind of braise. You can wrap it in a cheesecloth. You can also uh, wrap it in a little bit of twine and it gives a great flavor to any sort of stock or any sort of braise. So we're just gonna run our knife over the parsley just like that. We're gonna give it a rough chop. It doesn't need to be over chopped or small. This is really just for a fresh herb that's gonna go over this very sort of buttery, salty anchovy toast. And then it's just gonna be finished with some crunchy flake sea salt. So move that over to the side. Salt is ready to go and we are good to plate. So I like a board for this kind of dish. I mean, it just kind of, it, it just reads, you know, it's just toast. At the end of the day, we just made a beautiful anchovy garlic toast. So I think a board is perfect for it to plate. We're gonna just take this bread. It is really warm, that's okay. We're gonna get ready to plate. We're just gonna cut right through this. Oh, it's like, you know when the bread is like, soft and you can see the olive oil just kind of soaking and holding on to that bread. 
So good. Ooh. Okay. The bread kind of split right there for me, so basically did my job. I just have to eat that little piece. Mm. That little bite was so perfect. It was salty, it was creamy, it was crunchy. It's everything that you want in a perfect anchovy toast. So the beauty of a flake sea salt is like, this is beautiful salinity at its most natural form. But I like to take it and kind of crush it in between my fingers, right? You don't want the large flecks of salt to be so large that it becomes overwhelmingly salty. So just between my fingers, I just kind of crunch it as I put it onto the bread. And then we're just finishing it with some chopped Italian parsley right over the top. And I mean, manja isn't even the word I would use to describe this. I just wanna have this with a beautiful glass of Prosecco, nibble on it and can't wait for the rest of my meal. That's how I feel. It's like if I'm starting with anchovy toast, I know that the rest of the meal is gonna be like, whoa, knock your socks off, so good. I mean, anchovy toast for the Feast of Seven Fishes, it doesn't get better than that. Okay, so this is where it gets difficult. It's like, which one do I choose? <laughs> They're all so perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go for the corner. <sighs> Look at that, it's like perfectly toasted. It's brown all over, all that good butter in the center, the olive oil, the anchovy. Mm. The crunch, one of my absolute favorites. The saltiness from the anchovy and that little bit of Malden on top mixed with the ultra creaminess of that grass fed butter that we were not shy with and all of that olive oil. But the beauty is all of that oil and all that fat has created a creamy texture and a crunchy texture because it doesn't feel oily at all. And all of that goodness from this highly cured, olive oil cured Italian anchovy is just so beautifully salty mixed with that butter and the parsley. Mm, the parsley just brings it to another level because it's so fresh. Um, it just adds that herbaceousness that the dish needs because it is so much salt and so much butter, but it's so good. I just wanna have this with an Aperol spritz and call it a day. I would take this whole platter, just plop it on my lap and let everyone else eat the other dishes.